Alright, so if you don't already know, EGX took place last week from Thursday to Sunday, and we got to see a demo of Sonic Frontiers, one that we've seen before, but people in the UK were able to try out the game. I was one of those people, I tried out the game, you can check out my impressions over here. But not only did Sonic fans try out the game, but journalists, who may have dabbled in some Sonic back in the day, are also trying the game and giving their opinions, and one of them has gotten people's panties in a twist on Sonic Twitter, and we're going to discuss that one right now. If you subscribed to the channel already, please make sure to subscribe. We're trying to hit 100,000 subscribers and hopefully 7,000 subscribers before Sonic Frontiers comes out. Now, I know this is one of those videos where people are going to see the title or the phone or whatever, screenshot it, post to Twitter, and come up with some opinion without actually watching for the full context. Like, oh, Pran thinks Frontiers is on leash level now. He must have really turned around his opinions of the game. No, my opinions are still the same. You can watch this video for the opinions if you don't know what they are. But... Again, I don't hate Frontiers. I'm just saying that Unleashed is Unleashed. <laughs> Let's be real here. But the reason why I'm bringing this up is because, again, people's panties have been getting in a twist. The knickers in a bunch because of this review here. It says, Sonic Frontiers early hands-on impressions. Oh, no. Sonic shows promise, but this new Frontier feels like 2006. If you as a reviewer even mentions 06 in your review, I'd just like to know that you pay literally zero attention in game. Now, they didn't actually link to the full review, so people just liking this and retweeting it without actually seeing the full review. Which again, it's Twitter, so we expect shit like that. I went to go and find the full review using Google, of course. And again, there's really no similarity to 06. They just I feel like 06 with journalists is just synonymous with I don't like it or bad or what they just use it as a as an insult. Like it's giving me 06 fight, you just don't like it, okay? It's like back in the two thousands when people used to say gay as an insult, like, yeah, that thing is gay. It has nothing to do with sexuality. It's just you're just using the word. Anyway, they say it feels like two thousand and six, but let's actually read what they have to say here. It says Sonic Frontiers shows some of that classic promise in its linear levels, but the free roam elements that took up the majority of our playtime feel slow and repetitive, made even worse with an awkward camera angle. Pros, linear levels feel like classic Sonic. Good sense of speed in these areas. Cons, free roaming sections feel repetitive, awkward camera, repetitive gameplay. Your cons are repetitive. You say repetitive at two points. The same fucking shit. Anyway, as you can tell from this already, what we've read, this person's a casual, because the linear levels feel like Classic Sonic. Which Classic Sonic are you talking about? Wh which one? Okay. Anyway, Sonic Frontiers is the grand return to a 3D platformer for everyone's favorite blue hedgehog, created on the back of a wave of resurging popularity after years of development. But after going hands-on with some of the free roam section and a linear level, we're left with a lot to fear. An open world game featuring this mascot has been an almost unachievable dream over the years, with only Sonic Heroes standing out from the middling likes of Sonic Adventure and the 2006 Xbox 360 iteration of Sonic, which nearly killed this franchise for good. They didn't kill the franchise, it sold well, it just was not good for its reputation. Anyway, I find it interesting that this person really likes Sonic Heroes after dissing uh, Adventure. So you diss Adventure, but you like Heroes? I mean, Heroes is better than Adventure, don't get twisted. I fuck the Heroes, that's, my, that's the GOAT, but... Really? I'm trying to... I feel like... What did you see in Heroes that you hated in Adventure is my question, right? I'm, I'm, I struggle to think about that, like... I don't know, like... I mean, they're not the exact same game, obviously. Obviously, you can like one and dislike the other, but I just find it interesting that... I feel like this is one of those classic fans who just, like, they like that heroes had similarities to the classics in that you had the two acts one boss structure with the special stages which 3d sonic games really kind of strayed away from special stages minus heroes and i guess generations 3ds brought them back right regular gens didn't have them unleashed didn't have them maybe unleashed had them i forgot i don't know but yeah maybe it was that i don't know but it says yet sega still but yet sega still believes the formula can work and we all just got as hyped as before when Frontiers was announced. Does it deliver? Not really. Uh, we didn't all just get hyped. I was very spectacle. I was like, I want to see gameplay first. You can't hype me a CGI. Anyway, I call these early hands-on impressions because that is exactly what they are. I played a 15-minute chunk of the game at this year's EGX show. Of course, these may change when I play the full product, of course, naturally, but in this demo, I got to experience both exploring one of the Starfall Islands and teleporting to one 
of the more standard linear levels you'd expect from a Sonic game. And it says, gotta go, not so fast. So my adventure started with a goal of collecting two teleport pieces, which meant exploring a part of the island and finding my way around. If these sections are the vast majority of the game, then we've got some problems. So finding their way around, they got problems with that. To get there, you run across an open world, taking advantage of certain classic Sonic tropes, such as the bumpers and grind rails. You gotta call everything classic to make yourself feel good, clearly. Anyway, on the face of it, Sega has tried its best to overcome a lot of what went wrong in the 2006. Nothing to do with 06. Scrapping the, I'm not saying that word. I hate people that say that word. I'm sorry, I can't stand that word. It's just one of those words that, ugh. Those of you who aren't from the UK, it's one of those words that's meant to be like bad, like, oh, that shit's trash or whatever. Like, I can't, I hate that word. And talk element in favor of a playground with plenty of toys to interact with. But if anything, these further highlight how this formula really doesn't work in a 3D open space. The sense of speed is lacking, the gameplay of attacking repeated ways of enemies while finding a standard set of items got repetitive quickly for me over the space of a few minutes. And most annoyingly, the camera really doesn't help the situation. The camera that you can control. I don't know how this got repetitive for you, but you like Cyrus, but let me keep going. I had my fingers crossed that Sega had an answer for this from its last attempts, be it more fluid manual camera control or a smarter automatic option that gave you the best view at all times. In an open world? A, a automatic camera in an open world? No control. In reality, the company doesn't seem to have one as depth perception for hitting platforms is still Death perception? This ain't crash, talking about death perception. I've never had a depth perception issue in Sonic, but okay. A whiff of the, I don't hate crash by the way, before someone tries to spin that on me, okay? Crash one is goated. A whiff of the classic formula, but then I went through the teleporting thrown to the next part of the level and well, this is the glimpse of Sonic greatness I really wanted to see. Much like, <laughs> Hey, 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 don't compare, don't compare cyberspace to Sonic Heroes. Don't do that, man. You're hurting my feelings right now. <laughs> he manages to compare cyberspace to Sonic Heroes. <laughs> it was a linear three, 3D high speed run through a level of interesting obstacles and multiple. Don't compare cyberspace to Heroes. Man, is this the thing about liking games? Like, people always like think about people who like the same games and think, oh, they're similar. But two people can like the same game for completely different reasons. Five people can like the same game for completely different reasons. You can like Sonic Heroes because you like Team Rose and your favorite team has actually got prominent role in the game. You can like Sonic Heroes because the music is fire. You can like Sonic Heroes because you like the art style or the graphics or whatever. You know, not everyone likes it for the same reason. That's why two people could love the same game or even have the same favorite Sonic game. And then all their other Sonic opinions are fundamentally different. This person seems to like Sonic Heroes, but then yet thinks Cyberspace is, what, similarly engaging to it? Are they one of those people that played it, like, once when it came out in, like, 2004 and then was just like, yeah, I like that, and then hasn't touched it in, like, 18 years and then is just comparing it to that because it's the last Sonic thing they remember, aside from 06, which they probably haven't played, they just heard the reviews or whatever. I don't know, but it, they're not really comparable like team rose is the easiest team and even that is more engaging than everything i've seen in cyberspace so i don't understand how you even compare them just because they're linear and fast i don't know put simply this is what i wanted the entire game to be a rampant run that challenges your reaction time to move across different parts of this vertically stacked level to maximize your return on gold rings and power-ups this moment felt great but it came off the 75% of the demo focusing on the free roaming section, which just felt downright dull. If this is the pacing we can expect, then my concern for the health of this hedgehog is rising. Bottom line, the blue hedgehog was nearly killed by his 2006 outing on Xbox 360. Sonic Frontiers does improve on that form, not even the same formula. The boost and open world is not what 06 was about. Although 06 had hard worlds, it was not a boost game. But said formula is definitely tainted. Maybe it's time to give up the 3D free roaming aspirations. That's not to say there is zero enjoyment here. It's just in the places where Sega seems steadfast in refusing to focus on. The linear levels that really show off the speed and twitch reaction gameplay. But it's all slowed down by repetitive open world structure and annoying camera that, unless anything changes, will make this game hard to recommend. Now, there's three things I want to talk about here. 
And the last one is the unleashed point, which is in the towel. First one, okay, I was right. And when I say I was right, I mean the demo was too fucking short. Because you can clearly see this is a casual. Clearly. They mentioned Adventure, Heroes, and 06. That's about it. They didn't mention Colors, Generations, the Day Stages, and Unleashed. So when they say that Cyberspace is some kind of highlight of the game, they haven't played enough boost games to compare it to, to be like, there's better out there. Those of us who are hardcore fans, we know that the Cyberspace is a downgrade to pretty much every other boost game or similar levels of forces, but either way, it's a downgrade to the peak of boost. We know this. So for you to be comparing it to Heroes and 06, like as if they're the same kind of gameplay, they're not, shows you're a casual, right? So that's already clear. The second point I wanna make, the demo is too short. Again, I've gone on record saying this and people who haven't played the demo are trying to tell me that I am wrong when I played the demo. When 99% of the people who played the demo, or the Sonic fans who played the demo, who gave positive reactions. All of them played it multiple times because it's got a 15 minute timer. Remember the demo is the whole game, but with a 15 minute timer to fade you out of the game after the time runs out. Most likely you won't even get out of the tutorial area. That one side space level and the little open world he did, he didn't get to the main part of the game because if he did, you'd be able to tell based on what he said in the review. I got to this, the open part of the game only on my second playthrough of the demo. First playthrough, I didn't get past the tutorial area. And I wasn't going the fastest, obviously. I was exploring, just playing around and whatnot, which is what most people do. They're not going to go fast, especially if they're, you know, casuals. For the casuals who are not going to play the demo multiple times to try and like it, you know, unlike Hulk or Sonic fans who really want desperately to like this game, casuals don't care if they don't like it. They'll play something else. The demo is too short. It's a mandatory tutorial, and you make them go through that by the time the game even gets to the point where it's opening up, your demo's over. I'm sorry, but it was a bad idea to have such a short demo with an unskippable tutorial. Either you allow the tutorial to be skippable, let people figure it out as they go along, or you increase the demo time and give them ability to play actual parts of the open zone that aren't the tutorial area, which is way more restrictive and way less interesting. I already said before, if I did not do that second run through of the demo, my review of the Francis demo would have been a lot more negative because I wouldn't have gotten to see shit. And that wouldn't have been my fault. That would have been their fault for making a really short demo. No one's gonna speed run the tutorial the first time they play it. Unless they know, like I've told them that the tutorial takes up too much time and they might go into that knowledge and play differently. But yes, demo is too short. It's clearly showing because people are playing a tutorial and giving opinions on a tutorial. So again, that was a flop on their marketing. Anyway, as to the Unleashed point, Sega has had this problem since pretty much Adventure 1, and I say this as a Sonic fan, but I'm just removing my own personal biases. When you have games with multiple playable characters and different play styles and things like that, there's always going to be preference for one style over another. Whether it's a popular opinion or an unpopular opinion, depending on the style, it is only natural, right? And... The most controversial one is always going to be Unleashed, right? Because with the Adventure era, it was maybe, oh, I didn't like Biggs Fishing, or I didn't like Treasure Hunting, or I didn't like the mechs. But it was never as severe. Well, even at 06, it wasn't really that severe, to be honest. But it was never as severe as Unleashed with the Day Stages versus the Werehog, which people describe as two completely different games in one. If you like, if you like one playstyle, you might not like the whole game. If you love both playstyles, then that might be one of your favorite games, which I love both playstyles, and yeah, I love Unleashed. But with Frontiers, you've got a similar issue here, because it's like, you're not necessarily forced to do all the cyberspace. They said you could beat the game without cyberspace. So for those who don't like cyberspace that much, but prefer the open zone, they might be fine just skipping cyberspace and doing other shit. So it's not as bad as Unleashed. Remember, I love Unleashed. It's not as bad as the Unleashed situation where if you dislike one style, you're still going to have to do it tough. And if that style that you dislike is the Werehog, which was most people, then it's going to take up a lot of the game. With Frontiers, if you dislike Cyberspace, you can skip. So in that sense, it's an improvement. Again, I'm not saying Frontiers is better than Unleashed. I'm not saying that for the record. But the problem arises when you actually only like Cyberspace and you dislike the open world because there's no way to skip the open world to get to Cyberspace. You're still gonna have to do the open world 
or the open zone, sorry. And that's why I say this will be the next Sonic Unleashed, because I feel like this is going to be reflected in the critic opinions, right? There's going to be people that don't like both elements of the game. There's going to be people that only like one element. A lot of Sonic fans have played the demo and said, yeah, Cyberspace is booty. But to be fair, the reason we don't like Cyberspace is not because we don't like boost levels, it's because we know they're a downgrade. If, if the levels were like generations level of quality, Cyberspace would have been the highlight of the game, right? The only reason the open zone is the highlight of the game is because they don't know how to make amazing boost levels anymore. That's the only reason why. So it's not even like the open zone is so amazing that it surpassed traditional boost. It's just better than the mid boost that they've got in Frontiers or the, the mid side aspects levels they've got in Frontiers that it just feels like a step up, right? The moment you slap Unleash the Generation style levels in cyberspace, like the same exact levels of the same movement, cyberspace would be the highlight of the game. Just putting that out there. But yeah, because of that, we're going to have that half, half kind of thing. There's going to be reviewers who prefer cyberspace, especially these basic ones, because it's easy and they barely mess up or die or whatever, and they get all the red rings on their first or second playthrough, and they get S ranks so they feel good about themselves. And they're going to be like, yeah, cyberspace is good, don't like the open world. Then there's going to be reviewers that like the open world, but don't like cyberspace. And they're not going to just treat it like side content, even though it technically is optional. Because even though it's optional, the game was designed around doing cyberspace, okay? It's like saying the boost is optional in Generations. Like, I guess, technically, you could beat Generations without boosting for the most part. I think there's a few bosses where you might have to boost. But even then, I think people beat the Sonic vs. Shadow boss in Generations without boosting. I have to check that. But you can essentially beat Generations for the most part without boosting. But the game is geared towards you boosting. And it's the same thing here as Cyberspace. They want you to play Cyberspace. It's a main part of the game. But they're saying you can not do it. Because maybe they're afraid that some people might not like it. So we'll just put it there and say. If you don't want to do it. You can grind harder in other areas. And still get to the end. But realistically the fastest way to get those gears. Is to do Cyberspace. It'll be interesting to see how this game reviews. But I am expecting some kind of unleashed-esque review system I'm not saying the scores will be exactly the same but definitely that two kind of play styles clashing situation where critics might prefer one over the other and hopefully it performs well with the critic scores not too bad right I think it could get into the 70s I mean we need a 75 for it to be considered a Derby or Metacritic that's the green score 75 and above but we'll see what happens but again when you have games with different playstyles, this is bound to happen, right? So, there's no surprise here, right? This would have happened, you know, it didn't really happen with Heroes because Heroes is like kind of one team based playstyle times four. But it happened with Unleashed, it happened with Adventure 2. Even when the Adventure games came out, they were still well received, but people did have their reservations on like treasure hunting and things like that. But nonetheless, yeah, this may be the new Unleashed in terms of that comparing the two sides. I don't think it'll be better than Unleashed. I know people might be getting the wrong idea of what I'm saying. But yeah, let me know what you guys think about this. Do you think this is going to be the new Unleashed in terms of the reception of the game? Is it going to be a 50-50 versus like Open Zone versus Cyberspace? Or do you think it's going to be 60-40, 70-30 leaning towards one side? I'm not sure yet what people are going to say. I think more critics are going to lean towards the Open Zone than the Cyberspace personally. But, again, maybe more casual critics will lean towards Cyberspace because it's the easier, quicker part. But then the more hardcore Sonic fans who know that Cyberspace is a downgrade from past boost titles will pick the open zone because it's the newer, fresher thing, at least for Sonic, not for, like, gaming in general or anything like that. But, yeah, I think it's going to be a very interesting review run. It's going to be very interesting to see what people say about this game when it's, when it's time to score. And, of course, a big shout-out to all my channel members. If you want to come to my channel members, click the Join button next to the Subscribe button. But yeah, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell. Make sure to check out the non sonic channel. The link will be in the description. But that's all I have to say right now. So, Remy out.